Volunteer Tom here. I'm excited that you're with me today. Albert Einstein was in an elevator. It was an ordinary moment, but all of a sudden, the elevator began to move very rapidly. Albert's heart raced. He was frightened because he wasn't sure if gravity was pushing it down or acceleration was moving it up. This turned out to be a pivotal moment because Albert described this as the happiest thought in my entire lifetime because he realized that gravity and acceleration were the same thing and it changed the way he thought about all his experiments and the way the world worked. You're going to see a short film next, a parody. It's going to be funny. It's going to be silly, but it's got a very important point to exactly how big data computers do joins. This is going to be the part that really opens up your eyes to exactly what's going on. And the sky will be the limit because you're going to understand exactly what's happening in every big data system in the world. And now something completely different. Coughing Production presents The Resume. You wake up in the morning and you've never felt better. Put on your new suit. Your hair is perfect. You gotta skip to your step and you can't wait to get to work. And when you go to the elevator, you find yourself riding up with the CEO. You both banner back and forth and you're asked about your work philosophy. Ask not what your company can do for you. Ask what you can do for your company. The CEO says, you're the type of person we need in the executive office. I am going to double your salary. Have a resume on my desk in 15 minutes. When you leave the elevator, panic sets in because you don't have that resume. So you call your spouse and you say, I don't have time to explain, but I have to get a resume in 15 minutes. Listen, honey, I will do the first part of my resume, my goals, where I've worked, what I've accomplished. You work on the second half of the resume, where I went to school, favorite hobbies, make stuff up if you must. And hurry, because we only have 12 minutes left to complete this. After 11 minutes, you call your spouse and you have one more problem. You have to paste both parts of the resume together. You either have to send your spouse your copy or have your spouse send you theirs. You tell your spouse to send it to you and you then paste the two halves together and print your resume. Now you're on your way to the executive office for the career opportunity of a lifetime. Voila! Now back to your regular scheduled train. In our parody, we just saw two half resumes come together and be joined. They had to be on the same PC because they both had to be in the same memory where they could be joined and saved a disk. This is the way joins work on all big data systems. The average query is a five table join, but make no mistake about it. When two rows are joined, they have to find a way to physically get to the same memory pool, and then they can be joined together. A massively parallel system will have parallel processing as its fundamental principle. It's like going to the laundry mat that's empty and being able to do all of your wash and all of your dry at one time because all the machines are yours. When you think of big data, when you think of massively parallel processing, you should think about a series of PCs because they share nothing. Each PC has its own CPU, memory, disk, operating system, and that's the way you need to see big data. On Teradata, these are called amps. On Natiza, they're called spoos. On Amazon Redshift, they're called slices. On Azure SQL Data Warehouse, they are called distributions, and on Vertica and Greenplum, they're called segments. It doesn't matter the name. These are all separate PCs that have a host that tell them what to do, and therefore, they can work in parallel. 
I'm going to create a table called the customer table on a bunch of different systems. Here it is on Teradata. Now, notice the primary index is customer number. That's the distribution key. Here we go on Natiza. Customer number is the distribution key. Here it is on Amazon Redshift. Now, Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Now, Vertica and Green Plum. That distribution key means that when rows are loaded to any of these systems, they will use a math formula and go, what is your customer number? And each time that customer and that row will go to the correct PC. That's how they load the data. But the brilliance behind it is when anybody queries using customer number in the where clause, where customer number equals one, two, three, then the system will say, don't contact everybody. Let me do the math again. That's on PC number four, and only that PC is contacted. Now take a look at this. We're going to use the Nexus to join the customer table to the order table. Nexus is the greatest query tool ever invented, but I'm a little biased because I invented it. Now, take a look at your Nexus. I'm going to right click on the system tree and say Super Join Builder on the customer table. As you can see, you can see it visually. Now, what does it join to? It joins to the order table. Notice both of these tables now are visual. We're going to select all the columns from both tables and the SQL is automatically built. Now, let me say this. Both of these tables are going to join together based on customer number equals customer number. But here's what you need to understand. The matching rows will have to physically be on the same PC, just like the two half resumes. So each of these systems will say, hmm, what is the distribution key of the customer table? And they go, customer number. And they go, good, because we're joining on customer number equals customer number. What is the distribution key of the order table? And they go, well, it's order number. And they go, OK reload the order table, not by order number, but by customer number. And then the mathematical formula kicks in and the matching rows go to the same parallel process or PC physically where they can be joined. This is the most taxing things on any of these systems. It's the joins. One performance tuning technique system administrators or DBAs will make is if they see that the customer table and the order table are being joined 10,000 times a day by customer number equals customer number and each time that order table is being redistributed they will make the distribution key of both of those tables customer number and that way whenever they do a join the matching rows are already on the same PC now you're going to see a three table join between the course table. Nexus does the super join builder. You see the course table. What does it join to? The student course table. What does that join to? The student table. You see the student course table is an associative table, a lookup table. I like to call it a bridge table because the course table can't be joined directly to the student table, but with that bridge table in between, they can do the join because now the course table joins to the student course table on course ID equals course ID and the student table can then join to the student course table by student ID equals student ID and the join can take place. But here is the interesting piece of this. Whenever you have multiple tables, more than two that are going to be joined together, Understand that these big systems only join two entities at a time. So they're going to either have to join the course table to the student course table first, or they could choose to join the student table to the student course table first. Let me tell you this much. The distribution key of the course table is course ID. The distribution key of the student table is student ID and the distribution key of the student course table is student ID. 
They're going to join the student table and the student course table together first because they join on student ID equals student ID and that is the distribution key of both of them. So there's no data movement, the join takes place and now each one of these PCs or parallel processes, they have partially done their work by joining those first two entities. They will then take that temporary join table on each one of these PCs and they will redistribute that by course ID where it will go over and now be ready to be joined to the course table. Big data systems have more than one trick up their sleeve. Let's go back to the customer table and it's going to join to the order table but I want you to assume there are 10 million orders placed by only four customers. So we know that they're going to join on customer number equals customer number and that the customer table has customer number as its distribution key but instead of moving or redistributing 10 million orders across this system and crippling it, we're actually going to say, hold on a second. In the first pass, let's gather up those four customer rows and then let's place those in one table, one section, like an Excel spreadsheet, and then copy that to every one of these PCs temporarily for the life of this join and that's called a duplication. Now even though it's kind of cheating or tricking we do have the matching rows on the same PC and they can be joined together. This is called a big table small table join. I'm joining the claims table to the subscribers table and there are thousands and thousands of rows. One of these tables will probably have to be redistributed, but here's a great trick. If you are only after a subset of data on one of these tables, you can use an additional WHERE clause, and I'm going to do that right now. And the WHERE clause will be honored first. They'll go out and find all the eligible rows that fit that criteria, lessening the data quite a bit, and then a lot less data moves. I'm now going to do a seven table join, but these tables are going to reside on Teradata, Oracle, DB2, SQL Server. I'm going to throw in an Excel spreadsheet and we're going to join these together. Nexus has the ability to convert the table structures between systems and move the data to a centralized system where it can then perform the join. Now, as I say go, the data begins to start to move. It's going to Teradata right now because that is the hub that I've selected. And once it's over there, the data is going to be joined because we've been smart here. We're using the distribution key as we move this as the join criteria. So once tables come from Oracle and DB2 and SQL Server over to the Teradata system, they're already on the same parallel process, so the joins will be faster. But the brilliant part about this Nexus is I can change the hub to SQL Server, and I can decide where I want this processed. Now I'm going to do that, and now all of the tables not on SQL Server now move over there, including the Excel spreadsheet, and the join happens right there. If you really want to improve these joins, and these tables have less than a million rows, I can change the hub to my PC. And now, Nexus is going to actually query each table separately from each system, bring it back to the PC, and in the background using your memory, your CPU, it's going to do the join right there. In all three places where I ran this join, the report comes back exactly the same. Doing it in the right place at the right time is the key to great 
joining. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and that it was monumental for you to understand that on all big data systems, they're like a bunch of separate PCs. And so it comes with a couple of difficulties, and that is on joins, getting things into the same memory pool to make the join happen.